Out of high school, Tommy Listella never got drafted, but he was good enough for Division I baseball and committed to Coastal Carolina. And in his last year with Coastal Carolina, he was really good. He hit 14 homers, 70 RBIs, had a 398 batting average, a 1.156 OPS. Now this really compares to Nick Gonzalez's year in 2019. Nick Gonzalez had 16 homers, 80 RBIs, he did have a 432 batting average, and a 1.305 OPS, but those numbers are pretty similar. But the main difference is that Nick Gonzalez was the 7th overall pick in the 2020 MLB draft, and Tommy Lastello was drafted in the 8th round in 2011. It's kind of crazy because they played in similar competition. La Stella and Nick Gonzalez didn't play in the best divisions in Division I baseball. But still, a lot of the scouts saw Tommy La Stella as like a pinch hitter, you know, a career backup, utility guy. And you know, in the minors, he was really good. Like he had a 310 batting average in his career in the minors, an 849 OPS, and he once had a batting average of over 350. He was never good enough to be a top 100 prospect. So this led him to not even get called up in the MLB until 2014 whenever he was 25 years old. And he only played one mediocre season with the team that he got drafted by, the Braves. In 2014, Listella had one homer, 31 RBIs with a 251 batting average and a 644 OPS in 93 games. And after one season with the Braves, he ended up going to the Cubs. And for the Cubs, he was pretty much a pinch hitter, you know, utility guy, like he was projected to be. And this is kind of sad because, like, around the time the Cubs won the World Series, Lestella was about to retire. Thankfully, he didn't because he got a ring and he got some more playing time. But he wasn't seen as a long-term answer for the Cubs. So he got traded to the Angels for a player that's not in professional baseball anymore. But with the Angels, he finally saw his breakout year. Lestella would hit 16 homers, 44 RBIs, a 295 batting average, and an 832 OPS in only 80 games. He was an all-star that year too, and the only reason why he played 80 games is because he suffered a season-ending injury after those 80 games. So now let's look at the 162 game average for that. So if he would have played 162 games that year, Lestella would have hit 32 homers, 89 RBIs, a 295 batting average, and an 832 OPS. That makes him a top second baseman of all of baseball. In 2020, he spent time with the Angels and the Athletics, and he was a pretty solid hitter for a second baseman. He hit 5 homers, 25 RBIs, had a 281 batting average, and an 819 OPS. And if he played 162 games in 2020, he would have hit 15 homers, 74 RBIs, and had the same batting average and OPS. Now those are still pretty good numbers for a second baseman. So you know, Tommy Lastella is around 30, you know, he's supposed to be at the end of his prime. And really, he was just beginning that. And after his tenure with the Angels, Listella signed a three-year, $18.75 million contract with the Giants. And the structure with this contract is kind of crazy because he's going to earn $2 million in 2021, just over $5 million in 2022, and $11.5 million in 2023. And a lot of people see this and say, man, Listella became a really good second baseman kind of out of nowhere. But what if I told you that he was always pretty good and no one realized that? So hi guys, I'm Jake, and we're going to evaluate Tommy Listella's career and what the scouts might have missed. Because in all honesty, he was always good this whole entire time. So the first thing that the scouts kind of overlooked is that he's always a tough out. Listella hardly strikes out, and the most strikeouts he ever had in the minor leagues was 35, and the most in the majors was 40. And in his 162 game average as an MLB player, he would only strike out 44 times. That is absolutely absurd because all these hitters are striking out anywhere from 100 to 150 times and that's the normal. Now I know this is a generous comparison, but people like Pete Rose and Tony Gwynn really played like how Estella played. They were always a tough out, they would sometimes walk, they didn't have the best on base percentage, but they had a solid on base percentage, and a lot of the time they would strike out less than they would walk. And if you look back to Estella's college days at Coastal Carolina, he only struck out 18 times in 61 games. Now, Listella is playing the game that no one else plays. Everyone focuses about the homers, the RBIs, you know. I'm going to get to that in a second on something Listella had that a lot of people didn't realize. But Listella would not strike out. He would always give a tough at bat. He made sure he wasn't going to end without a fight. And that's something you don't really see. And another thing that the scouts overlooked is that Listella always had some power. But it just took him going to the Angels for them to realize it. If you look at his numbers with Coastal Carolina, Lestella hit 14 homers in 61 games. He would end up hitting 37 if he played 162 games. 
Now I know, you know, college is way easier. It's way easier than professional at any level of professional, even low single A. And he's not facing the best college competition either. But still, 14 homers in 61 games is 14 homers in 61 games. Obviously he has some power there. You don't hit that many home runs without having any power. It sucks because like he was never a top prospect. He was never the main focus of a baseball team trying to get into the MLB. And you know, he wasn't treated like a guy that should be starting because he should have been. He was treated as a guy that was just gonna pinch hit, gonna be the utility guy. He wasn't gonna get a main spot in the infield. That's how he was treated. No one was willing to develop his power because he obviously had it. And you know, you can say, you know, what he did in the college might not always translate to the pros. And you're right. And you're also right on this occasion too. If you look at Anthony Rendon for Rice, you know, he played for Rice, Conference USA. That's similar competition to Coastal Carolina. And Anthony Rendon only hit six homers and 37 RBIs with Rice. And he did have over 320 and he had an OPS of over a thousand because he walked like 80 times, had an on-base percentage of like 520. But still, he only hit six homers. And in the MLB in 2019 with the Nationals, Rendon hit 34 homers. But the difference between Rendon and Listella is that Rendon was a top pick in the first round. Listella wasn't. Rendon was always a top prospect. Listella never was. So obviously there's going to be more focus because Rendon was projected to be a starter for the Nationals. And even a star, so he's not going to be this pinch hitter. They're going to develop him. They're going to do everything they could to make him the best player that he can be. Because you don't waste a high first round pick on a guy that just doesn't do anything in the MLB. And I feel like that's something that really hurt Listella is that he wasn't able to get the starting time. And I mean, it's not like I'm like mad at every single like team that passed up on him or didn't do this. Because a lot of people didn't think, but like if you just look at how good of a hitter he was like his whole entire minor league and college career, it's just insane that you could only see him as just a pinch hitter. And then finally with the Angels, he was able to use his power, you know, he was gonna be the starter because of, you know, certain injuries or uncertain infield like positions, you know, he was gonna get a lot more playing time on the Angels. You know, he's playing like how he should have been, you know? And the third thing that a lot of the scouts overlook is that his style of play is way different than the MLB. You know, I mentioned it earlier about his like strikeout rate being very low, but still, if, if you look at his style of play, you know, He's not this overly aggressive hitter that's gonna hit a bunch of dingers. You know, Aaron Judge had almost an MVP season in 2017. He struck out like 208 times. That's like crazy high. And he's not the only one to have high strikeout rates, but to be considered a really good baseball player. And like I mentioned earlier, Tommy Listella was looked at as a pinch hitter just because of that certain ability. And he was never a top prospect or anything. And then you like look back and it, it's really sad that no one could really see how good Listella was. Like again, for Coastal Carolina, he hit 398, hit 14 homers, 70 RBIs, was only drafted in the eighth round. He had a 310 career batting average in the minor leagues, hit 356 one year in 2013, and he was never a top 100 prospect. So it's very easy to get overlooked whenever you're not, you're not given the value that you should be given. And I'm really happy for him, you know, he went from, you know, contemplating retirement to earning almost 19 million with the Giants in three years. That's an amazing accomplishment to just those three years will last him his life because he's going to make enough money that he could honestly retire if he wanted to after the Giants. He'll easily live such a good life if he plays it smart. So that'll be the video today. Thank you guys for watching. This is definitely something different and it was really interesting to me whenever I looked into it. So I wanted to try it out for the video for the channel. So if you guys like it, tell your friends, tell your family, tell people that you don't like because maybe you can get along by watching these. I don't know. But anyway, have a great day. You guys are the third 35 best people on YouTube, and I'll see you guys in two more days.